Okay, today we're going to have a look at an organism called euglena. And euglena is found in fresh water. It's, a lot of people know it as that green slime that sort of forms on the top of the, the surface of uh, the, the stagnant water. And it's when we look under the microscope that things get a bit more interesting. We see that it's a unicellular organism made of one single cell. And these shots here would probably be a couple hundred times magnification. You can start to see it about a hundred times, but you might need to go to four or five hundred times to see the detail in some of the shots we'll look at today. Uh, we now know that it's eaten by small fish and tadpoles and insects and, and things like that. Um, but things get a little bit more interesting when we worry about how it might get its food. And as you, can, as you might expect from it being green, it, does get it, it can get its food um, in a similar way to plants. And that's through um, making its own food through photosynthesis. And inside its cells, it does have chloroplasts to do that. So as we get a bit closer, we can, we can start to see uh, some of these chloroplasts and these structures uh, inside it. Um, and sometimes we can see um, a defined nucleus. Uh, we can also start to see some red spots, um, which, which make things a bit more interesting. Um, and we can sometimes see um, some down towards um, a particular end of the organism, some um, movement. And that, that's quite often from a tail we call a flagella. And it's this movement of a, a plant-like organism that, that's quite peculiar and was uh, quite surprising for a lot of scientists who first saw it. If we have a look at a diagram here, this is pretty well what we're looking at. Um, the most interesting structure here, I suppose, is this big, long, whip-like tail called a flagella. Um, and that's attached down this end of the cell. And just remember, this is a single cell that's like this. Down, attached down this end of the cell near a red eye spot and that that's used to detect light and it's able with this whip like tail to move itself towards the light so towards the surface of the water in a, in a still pond and it moves this tail in a, a spinning around sort of fashion um, like a propeller and it uses it to pull itself along so the tail comes first and the rest of the organism follows and it often means that it spirals around. Um, inside the cell yeah, we have the cell membrane as you, you know in a lot of organisms a nucleus which is often more difficult to see um, lots of chloroplasts okay, um, and we can see lots of other bits and pieces does have a vac vacuole which it commonly uses to remove um, water and other substances from the organism. So again, another uh, diagram of our organism down here, um, red eye spot, the flagella, which is very difficult to see. Um, we really need a high powered microscope to see it. Um, and we can see the chloroplasts. And we can, in, in these top diagrams here, we can see those similar sorts of structure. Okay, a very high powered uh, microscope would be used to pick up this tail here, but usually we can just see a bit of a blurring of the water, I suppose, when it's moving. Uh, it reproduces simply by splitting into two. Um, very simple reproduction here, and here's an amazing photograph just showing it um, reproducing, splitting into two, going from one to two. Um, what gets really interesting is its movement, and we can see the many different shapes it can, and appearances it can have as it, as it moves. So let's look at this movement in a bit more detail. And we can see uh, these organisms moving, uh, moving through here. Um, the, remember, they're moving with a flagella um, on, on the eye spot end. It's dragging them along. And you can see that spirally sort of movement by a few there. Um, and it, it's as that, as that flagella is pulling them along. And we saw that guy there. That was fantastic. Little spiral movement as he, as he moved. Okay. Here we can go. We can see here's another great couple of ones. You can see them almost being turned around um, by the propeller of the flagella as they move. All right, remember, this is just a single cell organism. Here we go. We've got some movement of some again. Um, and we, we can see that they can actually move quite, quite freely and quite quickly when there's a bit of water around them. Um, again, often having that twisting sort of movement uh, from the flagella, moving it around. Okay. Now what we can see here is some um, some f flexible movement of it, and it has the ability to actually change its body shape. Um, it, it can do that while it's moving for jello, or it can do it independently. And here we see that movement again, that flexible movement. And um, I suppose uh, as it moves along, the other important thing to know is um, it, it can um, swallow small organisms. Um, 
other unicellular organisms t to get food. Uh, it can swallow the um, uh, uh, paramecium and bacteria and, and th those sorts of things. So if it can't get enough sunlight, it can get enough food from engulfing and digesting other organisms. A pretty amazing little thing. So our question for you today is about, about um, thinking about when scientists first discovered euglena, they were very confused because they didn't know whether to say it was a plant or an animal. They just didn't know how to classify it. And we're asking you guys to describe a number of the reasons why they may have been confused. Okay, why they may have thought it was a plant or an animal or not been able to decide. And what would you classify it as? A plant or animal? We'd like you to answer the first question in lots of detail and, and say what you classified as as well. Okay, good luck.